So make sure after you check out this video, you check out part one of the weekly Q&A. That is up on the channel already. So if your questions weren't answered here and you submitted them on Twitter, uh, you could check out there. Also a reminder, make sure you follow me on Twitter and then smash that subscribe button. Helps the channel out. All right, so let's go ahead. Part two of the weekly Q&A. Let's do this! John Jones, who? I know you're going to say, but that's Mike Jones' reference. Well, I'm going to do it for fucking John Jones because I can. John Jones, who? John Jones, who? He kicks us off by asking from Albany State, do you think the Bears players were laughing mad when they found out Andy Dalton is a starter? Uh, LOL. By the way, I took your advice and now I'm playing baseball instead of college football. Really? Good luck to you, sir. I wish you the best. I really, truly do. Um, hopefully my advice works out well for you. I think it's a combination of befuddlement and pissed offedness. They know. They have to know. They may respect a guy like Andy Dalton, veteran, experienced, been there, you know, works hard, but they know who the best option is. They know what the future is. They know what the present is. And they know that comes in the form of Justin Fields. So, you know, to me, they've got to be just befuddled, bewildered, annoyed, aggravated. I, even though they won't say it publicly, certainly, you know deep down they have to be. The players know. Sash Daddy 2. Thoughts on a potential Brian Dabble hire next year if Nagy is fired? Um, I mean, certainly he's done great work with Josh Allen in Buffalo. Does that mean that he's automatically going to be a great head coach? Who knows? Do I think he would be better than Matt Nagy? Certainly. Would he be the best guy for the job? Potentially, but not absolutely. Um, yeah, not sure about that one. But I would have more confidence in him than I do Matt Nagy right now. That's for sure. Had this question come in a couple of times for a couple of different folks. Ilias99, Brent Urban Fan Club. Um, tweeted this in some form or another, so I just come smashed your questions together, guys. Your thoughts on Afghanistan? I'm sure you're talking specifically about um, the withdrawal. Like, I'll say this. It is funny to me how I see people going back and forth about blaming Biden or blaming Trump or even blaming Obama. That seems to always be a popular thing to do. And all the while, I'm sitting there and thinking to myself, you know, this is just another reminder of the disasters of the George W. Bush era. It is yet another reminder of George W. Bush being the worst president of our lifetimes and potentially the worst president of all times. Like, even if you fundamentally hate an Obama or a Trump to, like, an unhealthy level, you, their resumes do not compare to the sucking shit of George W. Bush. They just don't. Like you can go line item by line item. And as incompetent as you might have thought Trump was or as unyieldingly socialist and aloof as Obama was, there's no way, no way, no way that if you tell me you think Donald Trump was the worst president of all time or Barack Obama was the worst president of all time, knowing you lived through eight years of fucking George W. Bush, that you should ever be taken seriously or frankly ever be really allowed to have another political opinion ever again. You just can't make that argument. Bush is the worst by far leaps and bounds. Quagmire foreign policy, economic destruction, fear-mongering, suppressing and overriding of basic civil liberties, see Patriot Act and others. Like, you can go on and on and on through the bullshit. Um, as far as Afghanistan, like, probably no matter what happened, it wasn't going to go well, but it needed to happen. We need to get the fuck out of there. Like, this is the problem when you try to get into empire mode. And you sit there in a place 15, 18 years too damn long. Like, you want me to have an opinion maybe on, you know, how Biden handled this or how Trump, his predecessor, handled this. And let's be clear, nobody really handled Afghanistan very well. Time to get the fuck out of there and mind our own goddamn business. Like, this could have been a potential 
win for Joe Biden. Could have been one of his better policy decisions. Of course, he did what he does and poorly, horribly executed it. His leadership and his administration did. Um, but it could have been a positive, should have been a positive, because we need to get out of everybody else's backyard, stop trying to spread democracy throughout the fucking world, and worry about our own shit. We got our own problems to deal with. Stop trying to meddle in Afghanistan so that way we could continue to siphon off uh, profits and proceeds from the opium trade. Cool way as 25. Thoughts so far on your favorite rookie quarterback, Zach Wilson? I've been able to catch highlights and bits and clips. He's looked good. Um, haven't watched enough like in depth to see like just how good he's looked or just how good I feel about him. But I will tell you right now, like I've seen nothing to make me want to go back significantly on any of the grades that I put on any of these quarterbacks. I modified my grades slightly for Justin or Fields, just saying, you know, on Twitter recently before the first preseason game, I went back and watched everything he did at Ohio State the past two years, and I said, you know, if I had to do it again, I might have put like a first to second round grade on him, maybe QB three or four in this draft, but still wouldn't have put him ahead of Trey Lance and Zach Wilson, no. Um, but his arm talent is great. Like, I think the Jets have the dude. I really do. It'll be up to the organization to put him in the best possible situation to succeed. Fulia Georgian, do you think Dak Prescott will play all season or the Cowboys are hiding some elbow problems and he will miss some games? Great question. Don't know. I think right now I'd be inclined to believe that he'll play all the games. Um, but I could be wrong. The King Moj. Or King MOJ, whatever. Should Nagy risk everything and for one drive he gets Fields play with the starting offensive line? Because I'd like to see Justin Fields with the best pocket he can get before the season starts. You know, you would think other teams are getting their rookie quarterbacks experience playing with the ones, and yet the Bears somehow refuse to acknowledge that that's a good idea. They refuse to do that. Like, they're going so out of their way unreasonably to protect Andy Dalton, to protect their original plan... Like, that speaks to really bad leadership. That's what that comes down to. You can have the best thought out, best laid out plan you can imagine and muster. But at some point in time, if the conditions change, if the factors change, the variables change, and the reality changes, you have to adjust your plan accordingly. Sticking to a plan stubbornly, no matter what, is not something that deserves praise. It's not something that you should admire. That's something that you should ridicule and criticize. Because that's not good planning. You have to be able to adjust. And the Bears just refuse to adjust. It's frustrating as shit. So yes, he should risk looking like an idiot, looking like he's wrong, and put Fields in there with the damn ones. Because ultimately, if he's wrong, and Fields proved to be better, that's still going to be better for him in the long term. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make any sense to me. King Jordan 8476. If all of the top QBs from this past draft have long and successful careers, would this be considered the best NFL draft of all time? Um, if you have one or two of these quarterbacks end up as Hall of Famers and all five of the first rounders have long, productive careers, it could arguably go down as the greatest quarterback class of all time, yes. Long way to go there. And some are going to opine with, you know, 2004 and 1983 and say you had Eli and Rivers and Big Ben. Those are going to probably be three future Hall of Famers and... You know, the 83 class had three Hall of Famers, another solid starter for a period of time in Ken O'Brien. Um, Tony Eason had a few years as a starter, was a starter of a Super Bowl team. You know, and then Todd Blackledge was a raging bust. But, you know, you're talking about you have five guys and they all become like top 10 to 12 quarterbacks and a couple of them become elite. Like that starts to become in, into the best quarterback class ever conversation. Geo knows. Here we goes. Who knows? Do you think they will use the 25th Amendment on Joe Biden? And if yes, will you be happy to have Kamala Harris as your president? Um, something would really, really have to go oddly haywire for them to use the 25th Amendment on Joe Biden. If anything, I think they're going to try and keep him in there so he can run in 2024, which is going to be an unmitigated disaster. Yes, let's run the 82-year-old coot against somebody on the GOP side and expect that to go well. And as far as Kamala Harris... Would I be happy to have her as my president? Not really. She certainly doesn't move the needle for me. No. Like, who is she? What is she for? What is she about? Like, nothing is exciting about her. So, no, I wouldn't be. Gehawk54, do you think the plan to sit fields this year is just a way for Pace and Nagy to secure themselves another year? No, because I think... 
Pace probably already has a long-term deal in place of some kind or other that just may not have been publicly released um, because of the fact that the organization allowed him to make this trade to get Fields in the draft to begin with. You don't do that with a GM that's a lame duck. You just don't. And it could be, if anything, that the Bears organization is waiting for a more PR-friendly time to announce that Nagy or Pace has a long-term extension. As far as Nagy, the best way to save his job would be to show that he could develop Justin Fields. The best way to save his job would be to play Justin Fields. Playing Andy Dalton is a move destined to get you fired. That's stupid. Mike Schmidt underscore 007, does Joey Votto have a Hall of Fame case? In my opinion, no, but I'm sure some are going to make that argument. I think he's, what, a six-time All-Star or so, former league MVP, you know, in an analytics-driven age. Um... I think he's led the league in on-base percentage like six or seven times. He's somewhat similar to me, to like a Lance Berkman. That's why I look at him as a really good player, but I don't look at him as a Hall of Famer. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets some buzz for it. If he had some postseason success that people could really hang their hat on, it might absolutely help his case. But I don't look at him as a Hall of Famer. I think he's a borderline just Hall of Good, very good guy. But there might be some that disagree with me. BPEF00, the Trailblazers are not close to contending, so which team could offer enough young talent in a package for Dame so Portland can start their rebuild? Um, God, that is a fascinating question. Oklahoma City? Is it Oklahoma City? Maybe it did to your point about young talent to actually help facilitate a rebuild. Might it be them? Might it be Philly? You know, give, do a Damian Lillard, Ben Simmons centered package? So that way you're kind of re, retooling more than you flat out rebuilding? I'm not really sure. That's a great question. Dave G123 underscore 456. Most overrated head coach in Bears history, and why is it Matt Nagy? It's not Matt Nagy. It's Mike Ditka. Da coach. He gets celebrated for winning one championship for a team that should have won three or four of them. He had a good long run. As Bears head coach, definitely in that time period from 82 to 92. There's no question about it. But when you really talk about like what he did versus what should have been done or what could have been done, yeah, I think he's somewhat overrated. And the most overrated head coach in Bears history. Peter Jedra. The Packers seem to be in no particular hurry to play Jordan Love. Understood, Doug, because they have Aaron Rodgers. Nor to try to trade him. He might spend most or all of his rookie contract without playing a game. What might it be an indication of? What it might be an indication of is they were trying to prepare for the next 12 to 15 years of their organization, knowing that they probably were going to only have Aaron Rodgers for two to three more years. And it certainly seems like you're heading down the last dance kind of path with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay in 2021. Henceforth, as a result, maybe you lose a couple of years of Jordan Love's development on the bench under that rookie contract, but he's going to have a period in time where he's going to play and he's going to have a chance to see what he can be or what he can't be. Um, so it's an indication of maybe the team made a mistake, but they were also preparing for the future. And when it comes to the Green Bay Packers, unlike other organizations, when it comes to the quarterback position, they absolutely deserve benefit of the doubt. Tony underscore Summer. How have you managed to stay a loyal Bears fan through all of this? Watching from afar, this Dalton over the over fields thing would have me seriously reconsidering my fandom choices if I were a Bears fan. Tony, I'm a moron. Lots of other Bears fans like me are also morons. We are into sadomasochistic shit, apparently. We like abusive relationships. All of that. I'm too far in. I'm 40. It's three and a half decades plus of this shit. That's a lifestyle. I'm not changing my lifestyle at this point. I just can't. I've been through it for so long. Got to see it through to the finish line. So I think that's much as what it is as anything else. It's just habit, and I can't change that habit now. Splash Bro Kieran asks, How do you feel about the NFL's taunting rules? I think it's BS. While I'm 21, I miss when teams and players yell curse at the opposing sidelines and fans. I think the taunting rules are idiotic. I thought John Mara sounded like a clown when he was talking about it. Because people absolutely want to see more trash talk in their sports. They want to see more personality. They want to see more competitiveness. And by getting rid of that, you're taking some of that out of the game. Now, there certainly is a level to it. 
and there's a point where you cross lines and, and I understand all of that. I'm not just saying you let it go entirely, completely, but you got to allow some of it. You've got to. And for those that are going to be, oh, I don't like that. I like when the guys score touchdowns like the Larry Sanders and the Emmett Smiths and they act like they've been up there before. You know what? You can absolutely have those guys and have these other guys that maybe you don't like. Like a babyface heel professional wrestling dynamic. Gee, feature fucking that. But you absolutely have other fans that are into this shit. You have other fans that love this shit. So let them enjoy that. Let them have that. And if anything, it makes those that don't do those type of things also stand out. Like everybody wins, so you freaking let it happen. Not hard to grasp. So yes, I think it's stupid. Other things to focus on. Taunting rules is not one of them. We need some of that shit back in the game. Dane the Funky Homo Sapien. If I knew nothing about American politics, what two books should I read in order to get a pretty good misunderstanding? Oh, I was going to say misunderstanding, but understanding of left-wing and right-wing ethics and beliefs. Is it like the Communist Manifesto, Atlas Shrugs, something else? Uh, I suppose if you're trying to understand libertarian or conservative thought process, Atlas Shrugged may be something you would look at. But then you look at uh, Ayn Rand and you think about like how hypocritical she was, especially later in her life. Like She was not a good person. Um, uh, I don't know. Lots of politicians always seem to love to cite the George Orwell novel, 1984, and yet, honestly, seem to have very little to no understanding of what they're citing it for and what that book actually represents or means. And that especially comes from conservative politicians. But if I was going to say, like, if you were going to read a book to understand American politics, I think it's another Orwell classic, and that's Animal Farm. I think Animal Farm perfectly epitomizes American politics today. And I know it was written at a time where it was done as a comparison of communism, a parody, a satire of communism, a takedown of communism, and how it all this shit is different, yet it ends up being the exact same as capitalism, blah, 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 blah. And that's why I think it's a perfect book to read now. I love Animal Farm. It's fantastic. Jeremy Adams 04 is going to close us out by saying, do you feel Greg Popovich, for someone who hates Trump so much, acts like him, especially with his condescending way of answering questions and never owning up to his own BS? Um, somewhat, yeah. Like, I think it's kind of hypocritical for Greg Popovich to talk about the way Donald Trump conducts and carries himself, and then Greg Popovich goes out of his way to conduct and carry himself like an asshole. You know what I mean? Like it'd be Bobby Knight, it'd be like Coach Knight sitting there and criticizing another coach for their sideline demeanor and their behavior. Like who the fuck are you to criticize anybody for that of all people? So yeah, like I, I could see where you're going with it and I kind of get it a little bit. Like he doesn't like being challenged. He doesn't like being asked tough questions. He just doesn't like it in general. And it's kind of like, you know what? Stop being a bitch about it, really. Like... Popovich, to me, in some ways, is a personification of a snowflake personality. It's got to be his way or no way. I, I get it. You win five championships. You get a certain amount of respect. And you get a certain amount of things are going to be done my way type of thing. But, you know, the way he acts sometimes and he comes across is unnecessary for a grown-ass man. And he should fucking know better and do better. That's the way I think of it. So anyways, thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for both of the Q&A videos. I had some fun with this. Hope you did too. Do another Q&A coming up soon. Just a friendly reminder that NFL team-by-team -team season previews will start coming up in the next week or so. So excited. The NFL season is almost here. Thank the Lord.